good news for the dread pirate Nash. He and his four crewmates have just discovered 10 gold coins. And per pirate tradition, it is now time to divide them. Pirates have very strict rules on how they do this. The captain will propose a division of coins. Then it will go up to a vote. If at least half accept that division, then the proposal is implemented. If not, the captain walks the plank as punishment for proposing an unacceptable division. The next pirate down the line will be promoted to captain, and he will make his own proposal. If at least half of the remaining pirates accept, then that proposal is implemented. If not, he will also walk the plank. The next pirate in line will be promoted and will repeat this process until an offer is finally accepted. The pirates all have very similar personalities. To begin, they're perfectly strategic and rational. After all, this is Dread Pirate Nash's boat, so he wouldn't have it any other way. They are also life-preserving, then greedy, and then career-oriented, in that order. That is to say, they prefer being alive to dead, and conditional on being alive, they then prefer more coins to fewer, and then conditional on being alive with some number of coins, they prefer having a higher rank to a lower rank. The puzzle is this. Will the Dread Pirate Nash survive? And if so, will he be able to keep any of those precious gold coins that he so desperately seeks? While you think about that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. The hint for today is that you are going to be using backward induction to solve this. That comes from Chapter 2 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. Are you ready to solve it? Like I said with the hint, the key to this game is to use backward induction. That is, we should not start off by thinking about how Dread Pirate Nash should propose a division of the gold. Instead, we should begin by thinking about what would happen at the end of the possible interaction, where all of the pirates are dead, we only have one left, and work our way backward. That's because Nash can use the information about what would happen in the future to properly inform what his proposal should be right now. So imagine that we're down to just that final pirate. This is really easy. He makes the proposal, there's no one else to give gold to, so he really likes this outcome. He gets all of the money, and he's the captain. It's great for him. Again, the key to backward induction is that we can use that information to inform what happens in the previous step, where now there are just two pirates remaining. This proposal is also fairly straightforward. To win a vote, you only need 50% of it. And so, because the current captain just wants to survive more than anything else, he'll always vote yes to whatever he ends up proposing. But because he alone is good enough to pass the proposal, that means he doesn't have to give any gold to that last pirate. He can keep all of the gold for himself. So he really likes this outcome as well. He gets all the gold, and he's the captain. Like before, backward induction tells us to use what we've just learned to inform the previous decision. And when we have three pirates left, things are a lot more interesting. Now we need to have at least two votes to pass the resolution. Clearly, the current captain is going to vote for any resolution because he doesn't want to die. The key thing, though, for that captain now is to figure out how to buy at least one more vote. And in fact, he should only want to buy a single vote, because if he has to buy another vote on top of that, that is going to be more money given away than what he needs to. So the real question is whether he can buy the compliance of one other person, and if so, what is the lowest price he can do that for? Well, it's basically impossible to buy off the next pirate down the line. That's because, as we just saw, he would become captain and take all of the gold for himself. That's the best possible outcome he could ask for. 
so there's no way he's going to vote for the proposal. Which means if the current captain wants to survive, he's going to have to buy off the final pirate. Fortunately, that's not that hard to do. If the current vote fails, the final pirate will receive no gold, and he really doesn't like that. As a result, the current captain can buy that final vote for a single gold piece. And in turn, the current captain makes out pretty well. He keeps nine gold pieces for himself. What about the step before? With four pirates left, we still need to have two votes to pass the resolution. Obviously, the current captain is going to vote yes, and so the real question for him is whether he can convince anyone else to also go with it. And if you think about what would happen in the next stage, it becomes clear who's the cheapest person to buy off. Think about the second to last pirate. If this resolution fails, he will ultimately receive no coins in the next stage. He really doesn't like that outcome. And as a result, he's willing to accept a single gold coin to vote yes on the current proposal. As a result, that's exactly what the current captain should do. Offer one gold to that second to last pirate and no gold to anyone else. Buying off either of the other two is an unnecessary concession, and the current captain prefers keeping nine gold coins for himself. Now we can finally think about the Dread Pirate Nash's decision. With five pirates alive, he'll need three votes to pass a resolution. He clearly is going to vote for it himself because he wants to survive, so he needs to think about whether it's possible to buy off two other individuals. And fortunately for the Dread Pirate Nash, there is a very cheap way to do that. Think about what would happen if this proposal were to fail. In the next round, the proposal that will ultimately be accepted gives no gold to the middle pirate or to the final pirate. They really don't like that outcome. And as a result, they're willing to accept any amount of gold to vote in favor of the current proposal which means the Dread Pirate Nash can buy them off for just a single gold coin each. And as a result of that, the Dread Pirate Nash not only survives, but is able to keep eight gold coins for himself. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Take care.